What's up, Professor Wergelis here. We just finished the login. We are using reactive forms. We're now gonna fix up our to-do list and implement it properly. Okay, we implemented it properly before, but we weren't implementing it with reactive forms. So I guess I shouldn't say properly. I guess I should say we're implementing it properly based off the documentation. Definitely both implementations are correct. Okay, in this video, we're just using reactive forms. So we're gonna make a new branch. Okay, let's go over to master. That's gonna be our most updated branch. Oh, maybe dev is your most updated branch, just depends. And I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna make a new branch. Okay, I'm gonna make a new branch for our home page. Okay, so now we're gonna implement home page and we'll merge that back to the others. Now, first things first, let's come back over here to Canvas and get some of the code that we wrote before. We actually wrote this is the code we wrote in the previous videos for Angular. Okay, you'll see we use the reference form. This actually makes a form group, okay, but we don't have access to the form group. So we can't put those validations. We can't do the other nice things that we did in this video. Okay, so if I go back to the Angular documentation, they actually talk about this. So if I go over here, you'll see the template-driven forms. If I scroll down and talk about the reference variable, Okay, this is talking about form control. That's a reactive form. And here's the template. Okay, the template, we did an ng model. That's the two-way binding for that one. We did one-way binding. And it talks about the reference variables. Okay, I think they actually have it down here as well. They talk more about the reference variables. Okay, now with the reference variables, you'll see, let's say, example for this name exports an ng model into a local variable called name ng model mirrors many of the properties of its underlying form control instance so you can use this in the template to check for control statuses such as valid and dirty for a full list of control properties see this okay so essentially we're still making our form control okay but there's a lot happening underneath the hood that we don't know so we can still check here. So here we're saying ng if it's invalid or if it's dirty. Okay, but we aren't really able to access that on the back end. And that's why in the documentation, if you read about this, it actually says that the reactive forms are more scalable, more reusable, and more testable. So yes, I can check for, uh, I can check the form whether it's valid or not, but I'm not able to do that in the front end and the back end. Okay, so if I come back over here, I'm only able to do that in the front end. Okay, so that's the difference between the two. And actually, if I use that reference variable for the form group, so if I do a hashtag form like we did before, it's actually making a form group. It's actually making a form group. It's just we don't have control over it. Okay, it's all happening in the back end. And that's why they came out with reactive forms, to give us more control. As programmers, we like control. We like to be able to handle everything. So we're going to take this code here, and we're going to rebuild it using reactive forms. So I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go over to the home page component. In the HTML, I'm going to paste the code that we built before. But I'm going to get rid of some stuff. I'm going to get rid of this reference variable. And in the submit, I'm not going to pass a variable anymore. In addition, you'll see I have a reference variable here on the input element. We're going to get rid of that. And we're going to get rid of ng model, which was our one-way data binding. Then I'm going to get rid of this variable here in the add to do. And you'll see I have move in left. We're going to leave that. ng4, we're going to leave that. And the click function, we're going to leave that as well. Okay, but we need to fix this up we need to add our reactive form. So on the form element, we're gonna create a form group, and then we need to specify what the group's name is. So this is gonna be our to-do form. Okay, this is gonna be our to-do form. We've already got rid of the parameter here in the submit method. And then on this input element, instead of adding a reference variable, we're gonna add a form control name. So specify form control name, and this is gonna be our to-do, okay, which is what we had before. 
And then we, we already got rid of the element here in the parameter. So we got rid of that to do element here in the parameter. Instead, we can access it on the back end from the form group. Okay, hey, now let's go and fix up the back end. So we're using form group now, so I need to add the import. And I'm just going to use the form builder, so I don't need all those other imports. So I'm going to import from Angular's forms. Okay, you'll see that's a common import here. And I actually wonder if I add them, if it'll go ahead and add the imports for me. Let's try to just write the code and see if VS Code will add the imports for me. So in this constructor, I'm gonna have a private FB, just like we did before, a form builder for the form builder class. Okay, I click save there, it did not add the import for me. Okay, it may not add it from the constructor. So let's go ahead and add the import. We'll see if it adds the next import for us. Okay, add Angular Forms. We're going to add the Form Builder. Okay, once I have Form Builder, I can reference that form group. So we called it the to do form. Make sure it's case sensitive the same. And we're going to call the Form Builder and we're going to make our group with a JSON object. The JSON object is actually only going to have one element, which is our to do element. And we're going to do the validation again. It's going to be an empty string. And we want to make sure that we're going to validate. And we're going to make sure this is required, which is what we checked for before. Okay, you'll see I put validators there. It did not add the import either. So I'll do a comma, paste, and save up here in the import. And then we're going to make our to do array. So we have the to-do form. We also had a to-do array in the previous lecture, which was just a regular JavaScript array. And then we're going to add all the methods that we had before. So if I go over to Canvas, I actually put these methods up here for us. We have add to-do, delete item, and to-do submit. So I'm going to copy these methods. And I'm going to paste them here after the ng on init. Okay, go ahead and save. So I added the methods. Okay, but you'll see I have some errors here. So the to-do form is not passed as a variable anymore. We actually have it as a form group. So it's not going to be the same object as it was before. Even though the reference variable still made a form group, it's a different version of form group than we're using now. Okay, so they're going to have different methods. It's a different implementation. It's very similar to what we're using now, except it's happening underneath the hood. So one thing is we're not going to need these values passed anymore. We will need it for the delete item, but we won't need it for the to-do submit or the add to-do. And you'll see this method is not working anymore. So what I like to do is do the dot notation on the new to-do form and see what we have. So if I do reset, you'll see the only thing I have is the reset method instead of the reset form method. So I'll use it instead. Okay, and I'm going to use that on both methods. Okay, still fixing this up. If I want to grab the value, I'm actually going to use this new form group. And just like we accessed it in the login, I'm going to make a quick variable here called value. That way I don't have to write this big long variable out because I have to do this and then form group or form uh, to do form and then dot value and then the key in the JSON object. So if, if you wanted to type this over and over again, I'd have to put it here, here, and well only two places. Okay, but if I have a lot of code, I may not want to write this over and over again so I can create a quick local variable. And you'll see we're using TypeScript. So if I try to use var, I can still use it, but I should be using let. Okay, and they're doing that in JavaScript now as well. Okay, so I need to make a little bit of changes. And I'm not going to pass the whole form anymore because I actually have access to the form and the back end. 
So I don't need to pass the whole form. But if I don't pass the whole form, look at these two methods. Okay, I would do something similar on this method. Okay, we wouldn't need form anymore. We'd actually use value. Okay, we'd actually use value. And we wouldn't use the dot notation anymore because we already did it here. And if I, if I write it like this, these two methods are exactly the same, line by line. So there's no reason for me to have two methods anymore. When we wrote it before, one passed a string, a to-do uh, object, and one passed a form object. So we needed two different methods. But now we don't need two different methods. So I'm actually going to delete the to-do submit. Okay, before I do, let's go ahead and do a quick uh, commit. Okay, that way I don't lose any of my work. Before I start deleting stuff, try to push it so you can always roll back. So we're adding home page methods. About to delete to do submit function. Okay, just do a quick uh, commit. That way when I remove this, I can always get it back later save it okay now i only need two methods because i'm using this new reactive form and the form is accessible in the back end which i didn't have access to it before so now back in the html and same to do submit i'm just going to call the same method add to do okay let's see if this works so I saved it. If I come back over here to number one, let's make sure I don't have any errors. Compiled successfully. So if I come back to the page here, go ahead and log in. Click sign in. You'll see I'm still printing out the email and password. I should probably get rid of that. That's not safe to do. If I click on test, click add. Okay, you'll see it added something here but I'm trying to do a move in left. So I got an error here, but as far as it looks, the code is working. It's just, I have a small bug there with the animation. So we still need to add that in, but at least the page shows up and at least I have some functionality here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add this in. Now, in the previous video, we've already installed this, but if you haven't, uh, if you haven't watched the previous video or, or you're not sure if you installed it, go ahead and go do an NPM install, Angular's animations. Okay, even if you did install it on the previous one, you'll want to install it here so it adds it to our package JSON file. That way, when you push it up to GitHub, it'll actually put it here into dependencies. And then when you download it, you can do an NPM install and you'll see the animations is right there. So then somebody else could use the code as well. Okay, so even if you install that, install that before, make sure you install it here as well. So it puts in package JSON, and then I need to add the import in our app module. Okay, all the imports go here. So I'm gonna do an import from, okay, at Angular animations. And I'm kind of curious if VS Code will add this for us. So I'm going to comment this out. Let's just see if VS Code will add it for us. So I'm going to just put browser animation model. I did a save. It doesn't know what it is. So it looks like I'm going to have to add it. So I think on some of the common imports it'll do it for you otherwise you need to add it yourself okay it looks like i actually messed this up a little bit i added angular animations but on the import i need to look for platform browser and then animations okay so then it'll work now if you add this import and you add it here and it's still not working, most likely you need to do this NPM. 
And if you did this NPM before, that's good, but make sure you do it again so it adds it in your package JSON. Okay, once I add this here in my app module, I can go back to my home page. I need to add some imports here as well. Okay, if I go back to Canvas, I actually have the imports here for us. So if you scroll down, it's a longer import, so I added it here for you. You'll paste that in home page component typescript. And then we're going to go ahead and copy and paste the animation because this is also long. So copy this. And you're going to put it right underneath style URLs. Okay, it looks like I had an extra close bracket there. So get rid of that and save it. And you'll see I have my move in left animation. If I go back to the ng serve, I've added quite a bit in. You'll see I get an error now. So I'm going to do a control C and then do a re ng serve. Okay, let it build. I'm going to go ahead and do a commit while it's building. So if I do a git status, I'm going to do a git commit dash a dash m added animation to home page. Do a git status and let's keep building. So if I go back to ng serve, it just compiled successfully. So now if I go back to the page, do a test, hit add. Okay, you'll see it slides in. Test two, hit add, it slides in. So the, now the animation is working correctly. But don't forget about our nice CSS that we added. If I go back to Canvas, I've added the CSS for you here. I'm going to copy the CSS. I'm going to go ahead and paste it into the home page component CSS. So I'll paste that here, do a save. You'll see I import Google Fonts. I set the padding and margin to zero. I fix up the form. I fix up the H1, use the new font family. I style the placeholder. I change the data class. I add the LIs. I add a little uh, orange line on the left. And then I make sure I do a float right so it's side by side. And I change the text. And then I add some other elements here and make sure I change to the new font. So if I save this, go back to the page, you'll see I have my element here that looks nice. Click add, and you'll see now I have the nice display, okay, which is what we had before. Click on delete. It works, but I don't have my material icons here. Okay, how do we fix these material icons? So we need to actually import them from NPM or Angular CLI. We're going to do that in the next video. Before we switch over, let's do a quick commit. So I'll do a git status. I'll do a git commit dash a dash m. And this is we fixed the animation. But need to add Angular or not angular, add material icons. Okay, do a git status. I'm good. Go back over to dev. We can do a git merge with home page. Okay, and then we can go back to master. And we can do a git merge with home page. That's the most up to date at this time. We merge both, go back to home page, and we'll continue working. Okay, stick with Professor Wargalese, and we'll see you in the next video.